Imagine you could have any question in science answered. What would it be? I'm going to give you my top four, starting with this one. What are dark matter and dark energy? I'm cheating a bit by asking two different questions in one, but dark matter and dark energy have a couple of things in common, so I'm not feeling too guilty about lumping them together. First, as their names suggest, we can't see them directly, only the effects that they have on ordinary matter. Second, they each make up huge chunks of the universe that we don't understand. If we're talking about all the matter and energy in the universe, and remember mass and energy are two sides of the same coin, dark matter accounts for 27% or about a quarter of everything there is. Dark energy accounts for 68%, about two-thirds of all the contents of the universe. Ordinary matter, the stuff we can actually see, makes up a measly 5% of the universe. It's a bit embarrassing, frankly, if you're a physicist or astronomer, to have to admit that you can only explain one twentieth of what the universe is made of. On the other hand, it's not an easy problem figuring out what something is if you can't see it. We know dark matter is out there because, for one thing, the stars inside galaxies don't move as they should if galaxies were only made of ordinary matter. Stars at the edges of galaxies, like our own Milky Way, move in their orbits around the center so fast that there must be a huge amount of mass, dark matter, in a giant invisible halo that surrounds the part of the galaxy we can see. We also know that dark matter is fundamentally different in nature from ordinary matter. But what it is remains a mystery. That's frustrating, but it's also incredibly exciting because it means there's a whole bunch of new physics, something beyond the so-called standard model, that's waiting to be discovered. The same can be said of dark energy. We know it's out there, but we don't know what it is. Its discovery in the late 1990s came as a complete shock to scientists. They found, to their astonishment, that not only was the universe expanding, something that had been known since the 1920s, but its rate of expansion was increasing. Something is pulling the universe apart faster and faster, opposing the inward attraction of gravity. There are theories to explain dark energy, and experiments are being carried out to test these theories, but at the moment, we're still in the dark about dark energy. On to my next big question. How did life originate? It seems that life first appeared on Earth more than 4 billion years ago, at most a few hundred million years after the planet itself formed. What were the steps that led from a mixture of chemicals and energy sources on the young Earth to the first living things? We have some of the pieces of the puzzle. Some of the building blocks of life, such as amino acids, form quite easily on their own and have even been found in interstellar space. But how and where the first organisms, self-replicating primitive cells, came about is unknown. Are there multiple pathways to life given the right conditions? Did life begin in many different places and times on the young Earth? Does it spring up easily elsewhere in other places in the universe? Or is there some vital stepping stone or process in the origin of life that's difficult to accomplish, so that the appearance of life here on Earth was more of a fluke? Another question about origins. How did the universe begin? And I'm going to cheat again by throwing in one that's related. How will it end? The two questions are probably connected because what the universe was like to begin with will determine its ultimate fate. Cosmologists have made a lot of progress in understanding how the universe evolved in its first few minutes, but there's still the puzzle of how it got started in the first place. What sparked the whole thing off? What was the first event that led to the universe we live in today? Was there something before time, space, matter and energy? What seems clear 
is that by the time the universe was just a second old, its fate was sealed, whether it would expand forever or at some point many billions of years from now begin to collapse again towards what's been described as a big crunch. Following the discovery of dark energy, it seems more likely that the galaxies will continue to fly away from each other until all the matter in the universe is spread fantastically far apart. And so to the last of my big four unanswered questions in science. For me, it's the most tantalizing of all. What is consciousness? Or to put it another way, why are we conscious? Why do we have an inner world of experience, the feeling of what it is like to be in the world? I've written a couple of books on this subject, the second of which, Zen Physics, was published back in 1996. I haven't changed my views since then. I still think that mainstream science is on the wrong track when it comes to consciousness and that it's going to prove to be a harder problem to solve than many neurologists believe. My personal view is that consciousness isn't some epiphenomenon of the brain, a byproduct of the brain's workings, but that it's more fundamental than that, that in some way consciousness is a fundamental property of the universe that's always been there, right from the start. Well, those are my top unsolved mysteries for science. I'm sure you have your own list of big questions you'd like answered, and please feel free to tell us about them in the comments below.